It's Florence here and in case you can't tell from the fact I'm sitting on my bed in an attic, um, I'm at uni right now. I wanted to film an episode of my knitting video podcast kind of thing because, well, I finish university, like finish, finish university forever um, in about a month. And so with my dissertation deadline being in a couple of days and then having exams a couple of weeks after that, everything's going to be really crazy. And so I wanted to film an episode where I show you everything that I've been working on at the moment since there might not be much else for a couple of weeks. For today's episode, I think I'm not going to follow the strict order that I usually follow, where I start off by showing you things that I've finished, and then things that I have in progress, and then anything that I've bought. Because I think some of the pieces in this episode, like some of my finished objects and some of my works in progress, just work better when they're showed sort of next to each other. And so I'm just going to do things in whatever order feels natural. Um, I will probably show most of my new stuff at the end, so if you're not interested in that, um, and don't want to watch that kind of stuff, you can stop watching the video there. And I will also start off by telling you what I'm wearing. I have worn this on this podcast before. This is the Square Neck Camisole by Garnagslicht. I knitted this at the start of last summer. At the time the pattern was only available in Norwegian, but I thought that this top was so cute that that was not going to stop me. There will be more discussion in this video of following patterns that are not in English. Um, I am absolutely monolingual, but I found that this pattern was easy enough to follow. And you'll be glad to know that a few weeks after I knitted this top, the pattern was released in English. So I think it says something about the pattern clarity that I was able to follow it in a language that I didn't speak at all. And now it's in English, you have no reason not to give it a go. For this top, I used Knitting for Olive Merino. I've mentioned before, I'm not the biggest fan of summer fibres. I don't love working with cotton. I mean, it's fine for accessories and things, but I don't necessarily want to knit a lot of cotton clothing. I do like the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, but for the most part, almost all of my summer tops are knitted in this specific yarn. I find that in the climate that I live in, in the UK, I don't get too hot wearing these 100% merino tops, and I like the fabric better. I suppose the thing I like the most about it is as these sort of ribbed camisoles inevitably stretch out with wear, every time you wash them and then lay them flat to dry, you can sort of smush them back into the shape they originally were in, and they return to being fitted again. I just haven't been able to do that with plant fibres or with silk, and so I really enjoy that about the Knitting for Olive Merino, and I'm going to continue using it. The shade I used is Soft Blue, which is my favourite Knitting for Olive colour. I've knitted a few things in Soft Blue, and I think I saw on the Knitting for Olive Instagram that they are about to release a Soft Blue Pure Silk, which might have to make me knit some more Pure Silk things this summer. So I guess the best place to start is um, probably my biggest finished object. And it is sort of tangentially related in that it is another camisole knitted in the Knitting for Olive Merino. So this year, for some reason, this summer, I've just been thinking a lot about all over lace. Like, I want to wear all over lace things. And this is very off topic, but I have got a dress for my ball and the dress is sort of transparent. And so I've been buying and trying out some really nice invisible nude underwear and so suddenly I can wear things like all over lace camisoles without my underwear being visible because I have all of this stuff available um, and I thought I would really make the most of that. I knitted this swatch up, I don't think I knitted it up in the last video, I think in the last episode I just bought the yarn for this, um, but I knitted this little swatch which is rib with a little bit of lace in, so it's very easy and mindless to knit. For projects like this with all over lace I don't want to be constantly having to check a chart. So I think that a really simple lace repeat that still looks pretty and lacy is what I wanted to go for. And then since the last episode, I have cast on and finished an entire camisole on 3mm needles. So this is what she looks like. I knitted this in one strand of Knitting for Olive Merino in the colour Nordic Beach, which is another of my favourite Knitting for Olive colours. It's a sort of slightly warm grey beige colour. It's very, very pretty. I also find that these sort of light neutrals, like beigey neutrals, are sometimes a bit too similar to my skin tone and it's not super flattering, but I don't get that with this one at all. I think because it is so grey, um, it definitely reads as distinct from my skin tone and I think it looks nice enough on me. Where do I start with this? I knitted this top bottom up. I know that a lot of people are very top down for everything all the time and for the most part I agree. I like the fact that you can try top down stuff on as you go along, figure out length, I like the fact that you can uh, use up every last bit of yarn without having too much risk of running out. However, camisoles I do like knitting bottom up. I think the thing I don't love about knitting them top down is the sort of process, the steps you have to do when you're knitting a camisole like this. 
you have to start off by knitting straps and then knitting little triangles and you have all of these stitches on hold all the time and then you have to piece all of those together and that's just kind of an annoying process especially for this lace stitch I wanted to just get straight into it just start knitting the lace and see if I liked it as a camisole and so I just started knitting it bottom up so I could just knit a tube and then do the complicated stuff later also the construction means that I never have to take any stitches off my needle like I can work one section while leaving all of the other stitches on hold but still on the cable of my working needles and then rejoin the yarn to work those later so I never had to take stitches off the needle which I find really annoying and that was something I really appreciated I think in terms of the length thing because another downside to bottom up garments is it's a little bit hard to judge sometimes how long to knit it before you divide and start uh, knitting the back and front separately but because I have knitted so many camisoles from this specific yarn and I have this one I have I don't know a couple more in the drawer over there I feel like I'm pretty comfortable knowing about how long I want to knit it um, and I'm sure that's similar for a lot of you guys too I will just get up close enough now so you can see what's going on so it just has this rib lace all over it carries on up onto the straps as well and there is waist shaping on it to me this is really an example of that kind of easily mindless knitting which is still interesting enough to keep me wanting to knit just a couple more rounds you know to be able to add in other rub eyelets I found it really fun and really engaging I've worn this a few times um, I plan to continue wearing it it's a colour which I find very easy to match with things which I really appreciate like the upside to having a very beige and light blue kind of wardrobe is everything that I make sort of pairs together quite nicely and so it's very easy to put together outfits I've been reaching for this top a lot as the weather has got a little bit warmer and so I hope to make more of these actually um, about the pure silk I said that I do like the pure silk and I have trouble with it for camisoles because I find that it stretches out more I have a t-shirt in it that I really do like and I don't find it as unpleasant to knit with as other people do like I've heard people talking a lot, other podcasters, about the ball of yarn being really difficult to manage, that it sort of collapses easily, or that it's very splitty and uncomfortable to knit with. I didn't find any of that especially bothered me, like I didn't really observe that when I was using it before. I guess a lot of it depends on precisely how you knit, um, but I didn't have any issues with it, I like the yarn a lot. And I think that there are certain projects that are more suited to the pure silk than the merino, and vice versa. For very plain ribbed camisoles I definitely prefer the merino, but for broken rib or lace or anything like that I think the pure silk looks really nice. So I'm really tempted to miss another one of these in the pure silk. I do have some pure silk but it's actually kind of similar in colour to this and I don't want two of these tops that are very similar so I might get some more in a different colour. Maybe when the soft blue releases. Also I think that this would be really pretty as a dress and so I might want to knit another one as a mini dress. That way I could also write it top down so people have options because I think for a dress I would maybe rather knit it top down. It's funny how my attitude to whether I'd rather knit top down or bottom up varies by uh, what kind of garment I'm making so much. However, uh, that isn't the end of that piece because I'm not just making a one-off camisole. My very specific vision for the all-over lace wasn't just an all-over lace camisole, that's, that's not enough lace for me right now. I've cast on shorts. So basically I wanted to have this camisole, which is not super fitted, um, like slightly cropped, more cropped than I would knit it if I was going to wear it with jeans, but then have a pair of shorts to match in the same yarn and the same stitch pattern. So as you can see, I have just barely cast these on, just cast on a few stitches for the waist and knitted a couple of rounds so that it's stable and I sort of got it going. I'm going to do an elasticated waist and then do some hopefully looser fitting shorts. And again, this is the Nordic Beach Merino. I don't have very much to say about these yet since I have just started, but I guess I will mention the needles. I just picked up these needles um, within the last couple of weeks. I find that in the summer I have a lot of projects going on 3mm needles and especially for camisoles and things like that, I pretty much always knit them on 3mm 60cm circular needles. And so uh, I'm kind of limited because I can only have one project on the go of that type at a time because I do just have one set of interchangeable needles. So I have been picking up a couple of sets of fixed needles as well. These are the CNIT KA, it's the one that's not the Shirataki. The Shirataki is the one that I have as a, an interchangeable set and this is the other one, the darker coloured needles. These are much harder and much more polished and they're also a lot pointier so they're quite nice for doing lace. I think uh, most people might prefer these especially if you like how slidey metal needles are, these feel a lot more like that. Whereas 
these are the other ones I have, the interchangeables. These are kind of bendier and more pliable, um, and they're not as pointy. I don't know if this is interesting to anyone, um, if I can just get it to focus. These are the lighter ones that I have as part of an interchangeable set, and then these are the darker fixed circulars. I would give both of these types of needles like a 10 out of 10. I think there are times when I'd rather work with one and times when I'd rather work with the other. I do look forward to maybe picking up a few more of the fixed circular CNET needles, although I have no intentions of replacing my interchangeable set. I really do love it. So yes, that's the first thing I have on the go, this little two-piece set. Um, the camisole is done, the shorts are still in progress. They're going to be slightly different colours because I have different dye lots for the top and shorts, but I figured that's going to be okay. And I do have another finished object, but I guess I'll show you the other top that I have on the go. To be honest, I haven't progressed that much on this since the last video. I guess I have done quite a bit. In the last video, I just had like a long strip <laughs> of fabric that was this this part of the top, so I hadn't yet even joined it in the round for the front of the neck, let alone uh, underneath the arms, I don't think. And I've made a bit more progress. This is starting to look like a top now. So I think I mentioned in the last video, I've been wanting to make a puff sleeve blouse. Like I wanted to make a different type of summer top, which is very different to the camisoles, something that gives a little bit more coverage and just has a different vibe, you know? And I had this yarn that I've had sitting around since the end of last year. This is Brush Light by Cardiff Cashmere. It is 82% cashmere, I think, and 18% silk. So it is a very luxurious and very expensive yarn. The color, uh, as always, all colors will be listed in the description. I'm missing this up on 3.5 millimeter needles. When I was deciding what needle size to use, I suppose the thing I was thinking about the most was the opacity of the finished garment. I wanted it to be sort of slightly sheer so it looks pretty, elegant, like, I don't know, sheer garments look nice sometimes. But I also didn't want it to be a difficult thing to pair a bra with, so this is probably opaque enough that any light coloured bra or something relatively close to your skin tone would look fine with it. But I was saying I think if you switched this for mohair, you'd get something a little bit more sheer, um, and you could also probably get something completely opaque by using a fingering weight yarn, or a sport weight yarn, maybe. Now, it looks really big. Um, I've tried it on, and I think it fits okay. This bow is looking a little bit funny. But you can see it has a little keyhole here at the front, and an I-cord bow. I might redo the I-cord around the neck and needle size down to pull it in a little bit more. We'll see, I'll have to block it and try it on first and see what I think. I probably finish it first and then go back and make a decision on that afterwards. So I've done my waist decreases, I need to try it on and figure out if I'm at the point yet where I want to do uh, a lot of increases to get a fuller sort of ruffle on the bottom of the top, or whether I want to knit a little bit more first. And it is going to have puff sleeves. Um, I wanted to do puff sleeves and then have them come in really quickly with really fast decreases at the bottom, and then do a, probably a folded hem at the bottom of the sleeves. I don't know, it might end up being I-cord, but the plan right now is folded hem. I also want to do a folded hem at the bottom of the top. Uh, we will see how much patience I have with that, because I think there might be quite a lot of stitches. The reason I haven't made as much progress on this, like normally if I show something half finished, it'll be finished by the next episode. Um, it's pretty unusual for that not to be the case. For this particular garment, I think it's just because it's something that I have to try on frequently. Um, and the, the way my life is right now, with all of this work I'm doing, I'm going from place to place a lot. So the projects that I've been making the most progress on are things that don't really require a pattern or much thought. So I can pick them up and knit for 10 minutes and put them back down again, that sort of thing. And a project like this where I'm designing as I go and I'm having to think a lot about what I'm doing, um, it's not great for that. You'll see that when I get onto my socks, like I've made a lot more progress on socks that don't require that much thought than on socks that do. I don't think I have too much else to say about that top. Hopefully this will be done by the next episode, fingers crossed. And so I guess now I will talk a little bit about socks. Now I have a lot of socks on the go at the moment. As I said, I like projects right now during exams or approaching exams that I can put down, pick up, knit a little bit on, put them down again. Um, and socks are really that for me, they're very portable, I can just carry them around in my bag when I'm at uni. So I do have one finished pair of socks and I have two pairs of socks on the go, so I'll show them all to you and talk a little bit about each. So this is the first pair of socks that I have finished. This pattern is called Amber and it is from this book, The Second 52 Weeks of Socks. I don't remember the designer's name, but it will be in the description for sure. So these are a pair of DK weight socks. Heavy DK weight socks? 
the pattern honestly isn't super clear. Um, I knitted mine on 3mm needles, I think the pattern calls for 3.5mm needles, but it kind of felt like a lot of stitches for that, so mine is the smallest size, knitted up on 3mm needles, and I used a thicker sock yarn plus silk mohair. The sock yarn that I used is Rico Superba Alpaca Luxury Socks, which I don't have to hand right now, but it's a very pretty, slightly thick, grey sock yarn which has a lot of alpaca in it, so it has these sort of fluffy fibres on it. It is still wool-based and it does have nylon in it, but I know from having knitted a jumper in it in the past that it does shed quite a lot, and so I was a little bit worried about how it would wear with socks. So I think that holding it with mohair um, hopefully will help the fluff stay part of the yarn um, for a little bit longer. The mohair I used was unlabeled in my stash, I'm not entirely sure what it was, but the way it was wound up, like the look of the ball and the feel of the mohair, make me think it's probably drops. I find drops mohair to be pretty scratchy, it's definitely not my favourite, and so I think it's good to use up my drops mohair on socks, um, rather than trying to incorporate it into garments that are going to touch more sensitive skin, you know? So yes, these socks were incredibly quick to knit. I think I said in the last episode, I'm pretty confident that if you wanted to knit a pair of socks up in a weekend, you could totally do that with these if you don't have much going on. They are a broken rib sock with rows of eyelets in between the sections of broken rib. They're knitted cuff down and they have a heel flap and gusset, and I'm pretty sure I followed the pattern exactly. When I was knitting these I was a little bit worried because these are really thick, like even compared to DK weight socks, because I was using a thicker sock yarn plus mohair, it's a little more than DK even, and I was knitting it on 3mm needles, so it felt really dense and I was worried that it would be impractical. But the finished pair of socks actually aren't bad at all when they're on my feet, they feel pretty comfortable, and while they're definitely out of season, I don't think I'll get much wear from them over the summer, I think that when the winter comes back around, these will be a really useful piece to have. I am a Dot Martens girly, I wear Dot Martens pretty much every day, regardless of the season, and so I do like a thick pair of socks, um, I just find that they're very comfortable to wear. Also, it does get cold enough here in the UK that you do have to wear two pairs of socks, or think a little bit about what you're wearing on your feet in the winter, to avoid your feet getting very cold, so this kind of thing is really useful. It's like two pairs of socks, but you only have to put on one pair of socks. It's a really easy, quick, fun pattern, it gave me the instant gratification I needed when I got this new book of sock patterns and I wanted to finish one right away. Yes, I strongly recommend it. Okay, on to the next sock. This sock was also a work in progress in the last video, um, again it's something that is requiring me to constantly look at the pattern, it requires quite a lot of attention, so it's not something that I can just carry around, and so I've done a little bit less on it than I would have liked to. But this is the Erica sock by Yucca. This one will definitely require me to get up a little bit closer because there is a lot going on. It's this quite elaborate cabled sock, has this pretty moss stitch cable in the centre, twisted rib cables, it has broken rib on the back, cute little garter band before the ribbing, and even the heel flap is like not a common heel flap, like this uses a different stitch pattern to any of the other slip stitch heel flaps I've tried. This pattern I think really exemplifies everything I really like about Yuka sock patterns. Like every part of it's just been thought out really carefully. Um, things like how, firstly, all of the cables have the same length repeat, or they all fit into a chart, which is a 10 row chart, so you don't have to keep track of what row you're on on multiple different charts, and the fact it's 10 row I just find it easier to count, because I can just keep my like row counter going without resetting it. I don't have to do any math to figure out what I am modulo 8 or whatever, I can just keep on uh, adding one and read the last digit to figure out what row I'm on, and it makes it way easier to do a matching pair of socks, because I'm like, well I did 43 rows before I started the gusset, or whatever it is, um, I don't have to reset my stitch counter. I don't know, I find it useful. I like the fact that thought has been put into a pattern that goes on the back of the sock that matches but isn't the same as the front of the sock, like the broken rib pairs really nicely with the cables and stops the sock being too busy. There are a couple of different heel flap options, um, I was really happy to try a new stitch pattern. This one is kind of more slip stitchy than regular slip stitch heel flap, in that you slip stitches for two rows and then work them, whereas normally you slip stitches on alternate rows. So the heel flap does come out quite short, but I don't think it's a problem because you're still picking up the same number of stitches, so I think there is still enough fabric for it to be quite a comfortable fit, even though the heel flap itself does come out a little bit shorter. With that being said, the pattern does have instructions for a regular slip stitch heel flap if that's something that you prefer, 
I really like the two rows of garter separating the cuff from the sock um, and I also, and this is like always the case or all the yucca sock patterns like this that I've tried have had this feature um, the rib has been thought out really carefully so that all of the ribbing matches up with the cables and there's like a round where you move the cables to match up with the rib and then the rib is uneven it's just really well thought out all the patterns are beautifully well written for Magic Loop. This one is toe up and basically I would really recommend it if you are looking for a little bit more of a complicated sock, um, something that requires a little bit more thought. Like I'm really enjoying working on these even though it is taking me a little bit longer and I, I'm going to wear the sock all the time, I already know. The yarn that I'm using, I mentioned in the last video, this is Socks Yeah from Koopnitz. The colour I think is called Dan Bright, it's a regular light grey. Um, it doesn't really do justice to the colour selection that this yarn has. It has loads of really pretty muted blues and greens that I love. It also has neons, there's something for everyone I would say. This grey has some really pretty uh, colour variation in it which I really like. It is a merino nylon sock yarn, so it's definitely softer than some wool nylon sock yarn um, that I've tried but it feels a lot sturdier than other merino nylon sock yarns that I've tried, if that makes any sense. It's definitely a little bit thinner, so I'm knitting this up on 2.25mm needles and it looks really nice, but I think that if you wanted to knit it up on 2.5mm needles you might not get such a clean look. I mean it depends on what you want really, I prefer a 2.25mm needle for socks anyway, but this is a yarn that I'm really, really liking. Obviously I won't know for sure what I think of it until I've worn this pair of socks a bit, um, but so far all the signs are good. And then I have a third pair of socks as well. Well, so far just one sock. Now this sock is something else from the 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2 book. Here is the pattern name and the designer name. And this is what it looks like in the book. So you can see it's supposed to have contrast toes, heels and cuffs. With that being said, um, <laughs> I cast this sock on as an on-the-go project and obviously that is a big heavy hardback book that I'm not going to be carrying around with me. Normally I take photos of the relevant pages so that I can knit the sock on the go, um, but I didn't take pictures of enough pages before I took this sock with me while I was working on it. And so I ended up just making up most of the sock. So the cuff is done according to the pattern, and the slip stitch uh, sort of leg pattern is done according to the pattern, and then everything else is just freestyle. So if you have any uh, issues with the look of the foot of this sock, um, my fault, not the designer's. So here is the finished sock, you can see it has this sort of slip stitch rib, so it has broken rib and then slip stitches sort of alternating. And then I did a regular slip stitch heel flap, which, I don't know, I found it quite pleasing how the rib on the leg lines up with the uh, slip stitches on the heel flap. And yeah, this one is cuffed down. I am knitting this on 2.5mm needles because I do have two sets of sock needles, I have a 2.25 and a 2.5, so I can have one pair of socks on the go on each. Not that I like doing that necessarily, but I needed something thoughtless to take with me since I can't really take that complicated cable sock with me on the go. The yarn that I'm using is this one from Emma's Yarn. I showed it in the last episode because I had just got it. The colour is called It's Casual. I think it's like a jeans blue. Um, it has some darker blue and orange speckles in it, but not too much. It's the sort of hand dyed that I can deal with. I'm not generally a hand dyed yarn girly. It is a merino nylon blend, I think it's called Practically Perfect Sock, and I am liking it. I think it works well on 2.5mm needles since it is a little bit thicker. The colour is very pretty. I think I just don't love those sort of super shiny merino nylon like superwash hand dyed sock blends. The shiny look just isn't for me and I think it bothers me more in darker colours and I guess it is a little bit of darker colour. Overall I do like it, um, it's very soft, I don't know how or where. It's sort of outside my comfort zone for sock knitting, I suppose, since I do like to go generally for a sturdier wool nylon blend. But I think it really suits the stitch pattern. It's the kind of simple stitch pattern which I think plays quite nicely with lightly speckled hand dyed yarn. It does the yarn justice, it doesn't like steal the show, um, and it also means that you can kind of see what's going on, the yarn isn't too busy for it. I don't know. Vanilla socks would also probably look very nice in this yarn, but I don't really knit vanilla socks. I like to follow a different sock pattern every time. They're cute, and I think I'll have them done in no time, like I'm speeding through this second sock since I do take it with me everywhere. Yes, it's a nice pattern, or I'm happy with my version of this pattern at least. Okay, so I think that's sort of most of what I have on the go at the moment. I think 
before I go on to stuff that I've picked up, which I have a few interesting items that I'm excited to show, but I think first I'm going to show you a couple of swatches that I have for future projects. I don't know if that's interesting to people. So this first swatch, um, I wasn't sure whether to include it in this video because this particular yarn and this swatch is more part of another video that I've been working on in the background. It's not a regular podcast episode. Um, I have test knit group chats for some of my designs that are currently being test knitted. I tend to set up one info only group chat and then a chatty one where people can talk about whatever that's optional because I know some people like to be part of a friendly chatty test knit group chat and other people just don't want the hassle of constantly being spammed with messages that aren't relevant to them. So we were chatting in that group chat and I was talking to, um, well her Instagram username is Lilu Knits. She is a knitter based in Korea and we're talking about the different yarn that people are using for different projects and she was talking all about Korean yarn. And we all thought it was really interesting and we were sharing what yarn is available in our countries and she ended up sending me an email and asked me if I wanted to exchange some yarn. So I picked up some yarn that's really widely available in Europe and not so easy to get in Korea and sent that to her and she sent me a mixture of her favourite yarn that she uses in Korea. So I, I'm going to show all of that um, in a separate dedicated video where I show what I sent and also what I received and talk a little bit about what I am planning to do with it. Um, but something that was very cute about the box of yarn that she sent me is she put little post-it notes on all of the different yarn with suggested patterns, which I'm not necessarily always going to follow, um, don't have to, but one of the yarns, it's like a beige merino, and the little note on it said that it was recommended for the peacock cardigan by Lynnet, Lynnet, Lena Samsa, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I'll link the pattern in the description anyway, um, called the Peacock Cardigan. It's a pattern that I've seen before and I think it's really pretty, but it was never sort of at the top of my to knit list, like a must cast on right now sort of thing, and so I never made it. But with this yarn in hand, um, I went back to look at the project page and I was like, wow, that is the cutest cardigan ever. I need to own that. And so um, I went ahead and swatched for it. So the two strands of yarn that I'm holding together here, uh, the first one, which I will talk a little bit more about in that video, this is uh, one of the yarns that I was sent. It's a 100% merino uh, fingering weight, a little bit fluffier than some of the other merino fingering weights I've tried. And then just to meet gauge, I'm holding it with one strand of Izzia Alpaca 1. I really like the slightly mulled fabric it's giving. Um, it's basically meeting gauge, a little bit big, it's fine, I'll make it up as I go along. And yeah, I haven't swatched the really pretty stitch pattern for the peacock cardigan, I just did stockinette, but it seems like it will meet gauge and so I'm really excited to cast it on. I was so excited that I actually went ahead and ordered buttons for the cardigan as well. So I'm fully equipped to make this, I just have some other things that I need to get done first I think. And on that note, uh, projects with a bit of a deadline, I showed this yarn a few episodes ago. This is not my colour and I'm not hugely looking forward to knitting with it. The yarn itself is lovely, the colour is just a lot, you know? It's very dark and also very blue. If it looks black on camera, it's not. This is yarn from Marjo Garn. I think uh, this is the, they call it pearl mohair and fine merino. It's their merino and mohair. I think they're the only two yarns the company makes. Both of them are in the colour Midnight. Um, they are very pretty. I got these in this colour because, as I've mentioned <laughs> earlier on, I have a dress that I want to wear to a May ball. It's in about a month, just over a month's time and I wanted to knit something to wear to the event to pair with this dress. The dress is a mauvey purple colour, which is not my colour at all, um, but it has some very dark blue detailing on it, and so I figured I didn't want to make a garment that I'm only going to wear with this dress and then never wear again. Um, so I was like trying to figure out what colour I could knit to pair with the dress that I would wear at other times as well. I think mauvey purple was a bit of a no for me, but I figured maybe a dark blue is something that I could style fairly easily. And so I got this yarn over a month ago now, actually, um, from my ovary room when I went to the shop opening. So the plan for this is I want to do a ribbed wrap cardigan. I have done a little bit of maths on how I'm going to construct it. It's another no pattern, like making it up as I go along sort of thing. And I did a tiny little two by two rib swatch as well, just to figure out the gauge. Not that this is reasonably large enough uh, to measure gauge accurately anyway. Do as I say, not as I do knit your gauge swatch is bigger than this. Yeah, the yarn itself is nice. I don't think the mohair is as soft as other mohairs that I've tried, but I do think it's one of the cheaper mohair options on the market as well. Not as cheap as drops, but definitely 
relatively affordable. I think I'm just biased from the fact that it's kind of really hard to see what's going on because it is so dark. Yeah, it's going to be a, what do people call it? A product knit, not a process knit. I'm not looking forward to knitting with very dark coloured yarn. I am looking forward to going to a maid ball and having a cardigan to match my dress. That will probably be the next thing that I cast on. Okay, so those are my swatches and I guess the last part of this video is I'll show you the stuff that I've bought since the last episode. I think I'll start with the, the most exciting thing that I've obtained recently, and by obtained I mean spent my money on. I got these two books. Hopefully you can see them a little bit better. Now, when I'm browsing Ravelry, um, I always come across designs by Erika Turkai. To be honest, uh, they don't even have pattern pages on Ravelry, I've just seen a few people make them, and I also follow her on Instagram, and I think the patterns are really cool. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. Um, I think that when people are categorising knitters as being like beginner or advanced, it kind of misses the point a little bit. Like I feel like I'm a pretty competent knitter in that if I want to knit something, um, I can generally do a design and make it happen, and I'm pretty happy with the results that I get. And I don't think I would ever not knit a pattern because I'm worried about just difficulty, like I've done cables, I've done a decent amount of lace, um, I'm definitely a little bit less experienced with stranded colour work, but I've got a decent number of stranded colour work projects. And I think that the thing I'm most experienced with is just interesting constructions on single colour garments, I suppose. The one thing that I am totally beginner at, or not the one thing, <laughs> but the thing that I am totally beginner at, that I'm most interested in not becoming completely beginner at, um, is intarsia. I think I have never really done much intarsia because it's sort of is generally knitted flat, right? And I don't tend to seam things, like pretty much everything I knit is in the round, just by preference. However, there is stuff that you can achieve with Intarsia that you can't really achieve any other way, um, and I think that these two books, or Erika Tokai's designs in general, really exemplify Intarsia at its best. These books are so joyful. Um, you can tell by how much I'm smiling. I just love looking through them because the patterns are so interesting and so different from anything that I've done, and I desperately want to try them out. So, uh, as you can probably tell, these are not English language books. One of them is called Erika Tokai's Colour Work, and the other one is called Erika Tokai's something something knitting. It says colour work on it, so I think the book is just called Colour Work. Um, both of these books are Japanese language books. I took Japanese in high school many many years ago at this point, and looking at the patterns I think it's enough to get by. The fact that these books are mostly about the colour work, um, about the intarsia, and these books do have other types of colour work in a lot of the projects too, I'll show you a couple in a second, but they do have a lot of stranded colour work patterns, and what else do they have? Like slip stitch patterns, just interesting stuff in general. But because a lot of them are intarsia or stranded colour work, I think a lot of the pattern is charted and that sort of doesn't require language, you know? The way that they're written is also kind of self-explanatory. Like, there's basically a diagram showing the shape of the piece that you're going to be knitting, and it kind of just tells you how many stitches to cast on, how many stitches there should be at, like, the top edge or whatever, um, and then you can kind of figure out where to go from there, regardless of whether you speak any Japanese or not. Like, there are a couple of written hints, maybe, that I might want to try and figure out, but for the most part, uh, the writing on the diagrams that make up the bulk of the pattern is simple enough that I think I can read it okay. I don't think these patterns are going to be especially beginner friendly, I think you do have to be comfortable like inferring what to do um, based on limited information. It's a very different style of pattern from patterns that I've used in the past, but yeah, I'm not super worried about the language barrier. I guess now I'll show you a few of the patterns in these books, um, so that you guys can get all excited about them with me. So firstly, I'll show you some of the ones in this book. This is just Erika Tokai's colour work. I will just show you a couple of the pictures of things that I want to knit the most. I am not really a cat person, but I think for you cat people out there, um, isn't this kind of really cute? I think that this might be the first project that I cast on. Um, I don't have to worry too much about fit since it is just a little bag, but I love how it's styled in these pictures. I think they're so cute. And I think it could also use up scrap yarn really nicely. And just in general, here is the page where they show all of the different patterns that are in this book. 
There are a lot, although I think some of them are pretty much duplicates of each other, like this brown floral jumper um, is the same as this white one, really. But yeah, you can see stranded colour work, some sort of not so colour worky pieces, and then a lot of these amazing intarsia designs. So in the second book, this is my favourite of the two. Personally, I love this mountain jumper on the cover, I think it's so cool. This one also has a different cat jumper where the cat wraps around onto the back of the jumper, that is so cool. It's a very different vibe, but I love this vest, like I could see myself wearing this all the time. And it kind of looks like giant knitting, like scaled up knit stitches, it's very cool. I think this might be the highlight of the book for me, look, it's a hedgehog purse and a hedgehog bag. A hedgehog bag! This is the slip stitch jacket that I think is so cool. It's mostly knit, but all the edges are crochet, so if I made this I'd either have to cope with crocheting um, or figure out a different way to do them, which I don't think would be too hard. And yeah, this cardigan is just stunning. I hope it's okay for me to show uh, that much of the book. I mean, they have a section at the front which is just the projects photographed really beautifully, and I think it's this book. It's like not on Ravelry at all, so it's kind of hard to get an idea of what is actually inside it. Um, but yes, I'm really excited about these, I can't wait to try and cast something on, maybe one of the little house bags to start, but I would also definitely like to make the slip stitch jacket, probably that colour work vest which looks like giant knitting. And yeah, I would like to at least do one of the really amazing complicated Intarsia projects, I want to give it a go as a challenge to myself, maybe over the summer. I have bought a couple of other things, which I guess I will show you now. I'll start off with sock yarn. I pretty much have a new sock yarn in every video, and that is okay because I pretty much have a new pair of socks in every video finished as well. I got two socks worth of yarn since the last episode. Firstly, this one. Because I was buying these buttons and I didn't want to just place an order for buttons, um, I did get a sock yarn at the same time. This is Gepard Cash Sock. I've been wanting to try it for a while. It's 70% merino, 20% polyamide, 10% cashmere. So this is a very soft and not necessarily super sturdy feeling sock yarn, perhaps something for a more luxurious sock. The colour is 102, um, I feel like the name is Coffee Creamer or something like that, I'm not sure. It's a pale beige, it is the kind of sock colour that I wear a lot. And then the other one is more special if that's even possible. Like I said, not really a hand dyed yarn girly in general. But my ivory room got in some of these different yarns from Olivia and Oliver fibres. They're hand dyed in the Netherlands, they're very pretty, and there are something like six different colours or something of these sock sets. I never do socks with sock sets, I never do contrast toes or heels, um, I think perhaps I should try. This one is in the colours Feather, which is the uh, creamy colour, and Cacao for the dark brown. I think when it comes to hand dyed I don't like variegated very much or I don't know how to use variegated in a way that I would find easy to wear, but my favourite kind of hand dyed is light colours specifically, but like they have to be worth paying extra for it to be hand dyed, um, so I really like these ones with dark speckles in, this is like a creamy colour with dark speckles and I really love that about it. I was a little surprised when it arrived, it has quite a lot of pink in it. I know that these are from a collection called Warm Neutrals, so perhaps I should have been prepared for that, but like, it is a very pink cream and some sections of it are basically baby pink. I think it's a beautiful set though, and there are other sets that were also available at the shop, which I found equally intriguing. There's one which is light green with cream toes and heels, and that was so pretty. But obviously something like this is pretty expensive, like for reference I think this is like a £30 pair of socks. It's a lot of money, uh, so I decided to just get just get one, and I'll stick to my cheap commercially dyed sock yarn most of the time. The other yarn that I got, also from my ivory room at the same time as I bought the sock set, I said I have this dark blue Marjo Garn uh, for this cardigan. Obviously I'm not <laughs> super excited about this in this cardigan, and I wanted to give this yarn a fair chance since it is kind of interesting and affordable. So since my ivory room had some new colours in, I did pick up. Uh, this is the merino, the colour is called vanilla. Interestingly, I think there is a vanilla colour of mohair as well, but it looks completely different. So for the mohair I just got cream. The other reason I got cream is because when I went to the shop opening there was one ball of the cream mohair in the gift bag, so I could save a little money by buying the cream mohair because I have to buy one ball fewer. 
and I'm not super concerned about dye lots because it's cream and especially because I'm holding it with something else so I think it'll be fine. I'm hoping that I can use this over the summer to design another office jumper. As I think I mentioned before I avoid talking too much about my life in these videos, I know people generally don't care, but I did speak a little bit in the last video about how I have been looking for a graduate job and it's a real pain and a lot of people sent me their best wishes which I really appreciate. I did get a job offer actually like right after that video and I have accepted it I suppose so I think I do know what I'm doing next year now which is very exciting and so I can totally justify knitting up a couple of office jumpers over the summer both the cashmere one that I discussed in the last episode um, but I think this would also make a really pretty plain boring useful office jumper I thought I'd maybe do a tassel neck with this I think it'd be really pretty and I think this is the kind of color that suits me Oh, one more thing which I didn't buy, so uh, add I guess, this was a gift. This was given to me by my ivory room, um, and perhaps as a bit of like a thank you for how much stuff I've bought there lately. I mentioned a couple of episodes ago, I bought this tote like a few weeks ago. Um, it is from my ivory room but the manufacturer or the person who makes it I suppose goes by Minnick or Minnick Bags. It's a company that does I think mostly project bags and like bags for knitters but I've just been using that as my everyday tote bag. So I was so happy when I opened my parcel with the, the sock yarn that I bought and the mudra yarn that I bought and unexpectedly there was an extra gift included. This is the, I think the travel size Minook needle case but it is the one that perfectly matches the tote bag that I use every day. So now I get to be like the coolest knitting girl ever with my needle case that matches my tote bag and I think it's actually really useful because I normally use the needle case from Mood Living. I love that needle case but it is huge and when it's full it's really bulky um, and kind of annoying to carry around. This is like the perfect needle case to take maybe three pairs of needles along with any other bits and pieces you might need, some stitch markers, extra cables, um, a cord for trying on, anything like that. So I know that I'm going to get a lot of use out of this because it means that I can pack a little bit lighter every time I want to take knitting supplies with me and I know what I'm going to be working on. In the meantime though I think I'll use it to store uh, the couple of pairs of fixed needles that I have because I don't really have anywhere to put them. So yeah this was a really kind gift that I'm really excited to use. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said I have a dissertation due on Friday, I then have exams at the start of June I think, and then after that I'm free from my education forever which is amazing. Uh, not to say it's not been a great time but I am ready to, ready to stop at this point. So this will be a summer filled with so much knitting since my job is set to start in September so I have the whole summer off just to knit as much as I like and there will be so much, so much content from me then I'm sure. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye!